I hear that you're hiring interns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what is uh, what are the most important qualities that you look for in an intern? Oh, uh, they have to be from any school other than Iwa. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm here with Kim Taehyung, 대표님, who is the founder and CEO of Describe. And he's taken time out of his very busy schedule to meet with me, so I'm very delighted to be here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I swear I'm going to make this a good video. <laughs> <laughs> I came from the US like about two and a half years ago and when I got here you know just with the culture shock and everything else I just felt like I needed to find somebody I needed to talk to like some professional um, maybe a counselor or something like this and I asked like my small network of friends in Korea. They responded with like really um, surprising responses, right? They were like, you know, you don't need help. What are you talking about? Or like, you know, you don't want to start off on the wrong foot here. You know, like, you know, I, I realized that, you know, th that way of thinking was wrong because of the way that I grew up, right? It's not a, sh a shameful thing to have to look for help. And when I realized that, I started to think about how native Koreans might feel you know when they didn't know any other way right so with that you know they must have felt like so isolated and like they didn't know where to go right that's kind of like how the business started you know I started the business just with the Facebook group um, doing some underground research um, helping people along the way you know most of them they just wanted somebody to go with to the clinics and I met with them at coffee shops and restaurants on my weekends and then I'll just like hold their hands and go to the clinics with them. Just to total strangers, right? The ones I just meet on Facebook. And you know, that's all they really needed. I think that taboo really still does exist. And not just in Korea, but certainly in other regions around the world. And so how difficult have you found it to kind of break through that mentality? Have you seen some changes recently in the Korean market, but also around the globe? Our company is a social venture, right? And by being a social venture, we have like very strong social values while still trying to make a profit, right? Because we still have to be able to sustain ourselves. On our platform, people can find professional help for free. They can write an online journal. They can share that online journal with whatever health care provider that they found. You know, you can keep track of your mood and there's a, there's a laundry list of things that you guys can do for free on our platform. But we understand that stigma is a strong thing. It's like a real thing in Korea and not only in Korea, but everywhere else, right? A lot of places. I feel like the people that need to be educated about these topics are the people that aren't suffering from mental illness because people with mental illness, they know that there's nothing wrong with them. You know, it's not their fault, right? But it's the people that aren't suffering, that's not experienced with any of this stuff that might have a stigma or a prejudice against it. Because you're a startup, I think, you know, funding uh, is probably a big issue and has been an issue uh, for you since the beginning up until now. And I know that oftentimes we look at things like market size or potential market size and we try to gauge the potential of the startup. But because it's been so taboo, even things like that might be really difficult to, to measure. Have you faced any difficulties when it comes to meeting with potential investors or those that are willing to fund uh, this yeah, venture? Um, when it comes to both, you know, the taboo but also uh, when it comes to looking at potential uh, market size. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, just being a social venture in it by itself, regardless of what the business idea is or the business model is, social venture itself, you're going to have barriers to getting investment, especially in Korea, right? A lot of the VCs in Korea or like any kind of funding party in Korea, they say that they might be focused on social ventures or nonprofits, but a lot of times they're not, right? They're more interested in the bottom line, financial statements, you know, like where do you plan to scale and how much are you projected to make and you know like things like this right and those things are all important but you know as being as being a social venture half of our business model is definitely for social values so that's where a lot of the miscommunication or like misunderstanding might happen as far as us we've been very lucky and 
we were able to take advantage of all the grants that are available for startups, right? And being a social venture, we're able to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> While being a, a social venture, we're, we're able to apply for regular startup grants, social venture grants. And so the things that we're eligible for, it almost increased by double. So is that a lot of that, say, government funded? Government funded, hospital funded, partnership funded. While being a resident at Seoul Global Startup Center, we were able to make connections with Shinyong Bojigum Gigum, right? And they have a very cool thing, you know, like they actually help with business loans for startups. So, and at a very, very low interest rate. So you mentioned early on that you spent, you know, a large portion of your life in the States. And so even though I know Kayang speaks Korean very well, <laughs> really well, the working language still tends to be Korean. And I'm wondering if you found that to be a stumbling block. If so, how that can be overcome, especially for those who might not have Korean as a native language. Definitely, it's a huge barrier. If you don't speak Korean in Korea and you're, you're a CEO or startup founder, and you want to apply for grants, there's only a very small fraction that are available for foreigners that are doing startups in Korea. I strongly recommend um, having a co-CEO that's Korean citizen or an upper management level Korean person that can help you write some grants, grant writer or, um, a, or a manager. I think it's very important. Very important. Very important. So Taeyang is really busy. This is the second day of a three-day kind of expo that's going on over here at COEX, and so I can't take up too much of his time. But okay. I'm wondering if... <laughs> <laughs> this is good for one day only, I <laughs> think. Get out of here after. <laughs> <laughs> He's throwing me out. I think that there are a lot of students, young professionals, and potential startup founders that would be interested in the market over here in Korea, but even also overseas. If you could give a piece of advice or encouragement to those who want to run their own business, especially in terms of not just ventures, but in terms of social ventures, I wonder if there are one or two pieces of advice, encouragement that you would like to give to them. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I don't know if you guys will take this seriously, but if you meet somebody and you exchange a business card with that person, whether you feel like that person is gonna come, you know, be, be beneficial to you or not, right? I strongly suggest following up with that person, a, a short email, just saying thank you for his or her time, and it was really glad to meet them. You know, just that small gesture, I, I feel like it opens so many doors for me, right? Um, I'll go to conventions, I'll go to networking events, and I'll come home with a stack of business cards, and I'll spend the rest of that night, before I go to sleep, emailing every single one of them. And that's, I, that's, that's something that I actually really, really do. Number two is, if you do get some mentorship, you're gonna find some good mentors to help you out, right? Uh, when they ask you to do something or they give you a strong suggestion or recommendation, I would definitely spend the next few days, and if not a week or two, um, exhausting that method, whatever they recommended. And then after you exhaust it, whether it worked or not, honestly, like get back to that mentor and then say, hey, I tried doing this. It's not, I don't know if it's gonna work because of X, Y, Z, and then grab another meeting with that person. You know, these are these are the professionals in this in this in this industry. You went to this person for a reason, right? And if you value that person's time, then that's what I would do, definitely. That's what I do. Thank you so much for meeting with me. No problem. Bye. So what is Welling Bee? Are you filming already right now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>